Hi guys, welcome to our section about probability. In this video, we're going to learn mutually exclusive or disjoint events. Let's start. First of all, let's talk about probability. Probability can be written as a decimal or as a percentage. For example, you can write it as 0 0.3 or you can write it as 30%. Now, it is very important that you know that probability can never be negative or it can never exceed 100%. For example, I can never say, oh, that's negative 30% probable ha to happen. So it's very important that you know that it always has to be positive and it can only go from 0 to 1 or 0 to 100. Also, how do we define probability? The probability of an event is equal to the number of observations divided by the outcomes. We're going to do a lot of examples, so don't worry if you don't understand it now because I promise you it's very easy. Then, very important, the probability of something not happening is going to be 1 minus the probability of something happening. For example, if there is a 30% probability that it's going to rain, well, can you tell me the probability that it's not going to rain? You got it. I do 1 minus 0.3. As you can see here, if you're dealing with numbers like, like 1, you have to deal with decimals for the rest. So let's do an example. What is the probability of rolling a dice? I get in a 3. Now, the first thing you need to do is to find out the outcomes. What are the outcomes? The outcomes are the possible things that the die can have. Well, when you roll it, you can get a 1, or a 2, or a 3, 4, 5, and 6. Therefore, the probability of getting a 3 when you roll a die is 1 out of 6. Why? Because remember, how many 3's do you have here? I only have 1. So it's the number of observations divided by the number of outcomes. Therefore, I only have one observation over six outcomes. Let's do another example. What is the probability of rolling a dice and getting an even number? Well, let's check out our outcomes. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. That has not changed. I still have six outcomes. But now let's figure out the even numbers. Okay, I can have a two, a four, or a six. I have three observations, therefore, the probability of getting an even number is going to be three out of six. However, you always have to leave your probability in the lowest term, which is one half. Awesome. Now, let's do something a little bit more complicated. A box contains marbles. Four are red, five are white, and two are green. What is the probability of randomly choosing a red? Well, let's figure it out how many outcomes I have. Remember, the outcomes are all the possible choices that I can get. Well, I can get four red, five white, and two green. When I add that, I'm going to get 11 outcomes. Can you tell me how many reds I have? Well, you guess it. Four out of 11. So the probability of getting a red is just four marbles that are red over the whole 11. Now let's do something a little bit different. What is the probability of not choosing a red? Remember, any time I want the probability of something not happening, it's going to be 1 minus the probability of happening. This is a very simple example. So here I can easily see that the probability of having a red is 4 out of 11. The probability of not having a red is 1 minus 4 out of 11. Now, let's do this fraction here. Instead of writing 1 minus 4 out of 11, just do 11 over 11, because remember, 11 over 11 is just 1, minus 4 out of 11. Did you see? Now this looks so much easier. Now I'm going to keep the same denominator, which is 11, and then I just subtract the top. 11 minus 4 is equal to 7. You also could have done this. Since I don't want a red, just eliminate the red and just get the white, which is 5, and two, that is green. So you also could have done, what is the probability of not choosing a red? Well, five are white, two are green, seven out of 11. This is a very simple example, but you can do it both ways. Let's go ahead and understand now what is mutually exclusive or a disjoint event. These events cannot happen at the same time. 
For example, choosing a red and a blue marble. Either you're married to Brad Pitt or Johnny Depp, but you cannot be married with both of them at the same time. Mutual exclusive means that either one happens or the other one happens, but not at the same time. That is why the formula is going to be this. The key word is going to be or. When you hear the word or, you ask yourself, is this mutually exclusive? That means, can it happen at the same time? If I cannot happen at the same time, you follow the same formula. PA plus PB, which means the probability of one event plus the probability of the other event happening. Let's do an example. Again, the box contains marbles, four are red, five are white, and two are green. What is the probability of choosing a white or a red marble? Now, can I get a white and a red at the same time? I cannot. So this is a mutually exclusive event. So I'm going to go ahead and do my formula, which is the probability of getting a white or a red. Did you see the keyword here is or? I promise you. Always make sure you follow the keywords. The probability of getting a white is going to be what? 5 out of 11. The probability of getting a red is going to be 4 out of 11. Well, let's see. If I do 5 over 11 plus 4 out of 11, I get 9 over 11. Awesome. Let's do another one. Now, the same problem, but they're telling me, what is the probability of choosing neither a green or a red? I want anything except green or red. We're going to follow the same principle. We want the probability first of choosing a green or a red, which is 2 out of 11 plus 4 out of 11. And once I get that, I'm going to just subtract 1 minus my answer. I don't want neither a green or a red. So 1 minus 6 over 11. Remember, this one, just write it down as 11 over 11. And I get 5 over 11. Also, you could have done this. I don't want a green or a red. So what do I want? I just want a white. So it's 5 out of 11. I hope that you learn a lot. Don't forget to watch our other videos. And again, thanks so much for learning.